And welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Lost Podcast of Titan, a father and son journey through the sci-fi series that unite our generations, and we are still back on season three of Star Trek Save Us. Oh my god. Crawling painfully towards the uh <laughs> Towards the end. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. But oh man, this is bad. I hate to think that this whole experience is going to leave us with a bad taste in our mouth I don't, concerning I don't the Star Trek franchise. I don't think so much as a bad taste. It's just maybe uh, replacing the rose-tinted glasses with just actual glasses and recognizing there's some fantastic Star Trek episodes. But season, just season three, almost as a whole, just you could just write off. Oh. Pretty much, yeah. Oh. But anyway, so today we are wa what are we watching? We're watching Star Trek: The Original Lights Series. of Zatar. The Lights of Zatar. The Enterprise is on course to install new equipment on Memory Alpha, the central library storage facility for the Federation, and this has to be a fantastic episode because the <laughs> the Supreme Star Trek fan page wiki takes their name from Memory Alpha, so clearly this is this is the best episode of the entire. Of the entire series, no doubt. I, I I like the hopeful tone in your voice. Uh huh. Now, do we want to take a bet? Is 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 uh is Chekhov going to be on board? Is Sulu going to be there? Or is it going to be the same lanky motherfucker? Uh, I apologize for the lawnmower in the background, ladies and gentlemen. He's he was waiting for us to start. Yeah, he's got a he's got got this room bug. Probably. But anyway, go well, ahead. Just, uh, oh, what was that? I was going to say, just let him pass by. <laughs> There's nothing to mow out there. How many passes does he have to make? Ladies and gentlemen, he's mowing dirt is essentially what he's doing. <laughs> dirt and rocks. Yeah. I'm surprised one hasn't come through this window. Uh, remember when I was almost killed? Yes. <laughs> I, I think about that often. You think about that often. I think about that that often I, I can imagine you did think no uh he was in our living room one time working at his computer the lawnmower guy comes riding past and apparently his machine hurls a rock at great speed goes through our window narrowly misses his skull buries itself in the opposite wall i thought i, I thought i had get, gotten up for a second wasn't that the thing that i had gotten up and then you may was, have yeah because I remember thinking to myself, if I just stayed at my desk, I would have been killed. Uh, and the apartment, uh, the complex, like, did not really seem to recognize what had happened or why it might have been an issue. <laughs> no, they were rather lackadaisical about the fact that one of the tenants was almost murdered in the living room. Yeah. And they didn't seem to care too much about the hole in the wall either. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. It it was a uh, it was the apartment complex that lived next to the other apartment complex that had to build a wall to keep the the other apartment complex out. And it was the same apartment complex where um, I don't know before or after one of the units was running a meth lab and managed to burn the entire unit down. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, anyway, yes. So welcome back to our Star Trek podcast, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. So in today's meth lab. You want to go ahead and put us a pause and uh, find the lights of Zetar on your favorite physical media or streaming service and come back to us when you're ready. Uh, welcome back. We'll go ahead and get started in three, two, one, play. Shabu. I am recording, right? Yes. Okay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So what I never really understood is why uh, there's this desire to centralize all knowledge in one single spot. They may as well call it, you know, the Library of Alexandria and wait for it to get burned. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm.
And they've only used this shot like once before. I wonder how. And he's. Oh, there's Chekhov. Hey, Chekhov. Oh, and there's Sulu. But I was thinking Kirk is putting all that into a log entry. Yeah, that, that is kind of weird. <laughs> Is it? There we go. Well, what was she doing beforehand? Wait a minute. Hold on. She's a lieutenant. How did she become a lieutenant? Doing research on uh, data storage systems. For who? The Klingons? The Federation. The, the, Federation. Kling the Romulans? The Federation. Oh, Lord. That is weird. Why do I have? Why do we have the the tracking bar at the bottom? Usually, it goes away if I don't touch anything. Sounds like a good uh, band name. Maximum <laughs> calibration. Welcome, St. Louis! <laughs> We're gonna play our hit! Hailing frequencies open! Yeah! Kick out the jam! We're selling our CDs out of the trunk of our car! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Can we maybe go around it or go backwards? I, I mean, like. I do find it weird that you were going straight forward, just straight to, to it. Wait a minute. Hold the fuck on. Uh, okay. Is this fucking um... Star Trek the motion picture? Where no. uh, an alien force although, although, yeah, uses I see a probe what you're to, to, like, yeah. Is this is this the motion picture? No, I thought you were going to say, was this the first, or was this the second pilot episode when crew members get possessed by energy after they pass through the galactic barrier? Yeah. Although I will notice this. Remember... Uh, in the Halcyon days when we were reviewing season one or commentating, whatever. <laughs> Some distant past. Some distant past. And it was like every other episode was a fucking mind power episode. Yes. We haven't had any of those in like seasons. I don't think well, we had almost any of them in season two or three. Okay. Well, maybe this is the season third mind power episode. No, this is the season three motion picture episode. <laughs> this is Vija. And Jeremy Tarcher and Sherry Lewis were husband and wife. What were they, the writers? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the they, name. They were the right. They were the writers of the episode. Old people like myself oh, Lord. would remember Sherry Lewis as the uh, as a puppeteer who had her own show in the '60s. Was it Lamb Chop? Yeah. Wait, the puppeteer of Lamb Chop wrote Star Trek episodes. Only one. This one. Yes. And it was shit. <laughs> Which Give is why chance. she never wrote another one. Also, how That's does McCoy it. know to go there? Uh, when we were talking, they said to get call sick bay. Oh, okay. Although that is weird now that the puppeteer of Lamb Chop actually was a, a TV show, right? Okay, so 
on a serious note, does she have any other writing credits that are maybe good? Um, Sherry Lewis. Let me just look up a moment. Because it could have been like, look, this woman produces a hit show on a daily basis, $40 an episode, using a hand puppet. We can, we can throw her a bone. Let her write Star Trek. Fuck it. <laughs> Aww. Let's see. Sherry Lewis, writer. Uh... A TV movie from 1973, A Picture of Us, and a video in 1989, Don't Wake Your Mom. Don't Wake Your Mom. That sounds like a coming-of-age comedy or something like that. Probably. Keep the... Why are y'all arguing about what was paralyzed? Episode filler. As though everyone else was wrong. And... <clears throat> Under pressure. Coming down on me. Check her Esper level. Which was never mentioned again. Yeah. Oh, excuse you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. How rude to our audience. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the worst thing our audience had to put up with? Didn't Kirk tell you to stay at your post? Yes. What kind of Kirk bullshit did. is this? Shut up. <laughs> oh. All right. Throw her out the airlock. Sorry, sir. We couldn't save her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> peed on your Cheerios. Also, what does McCoy expect her to do if she doesn't, if she didn't feel anything? Like, I don't know. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to smack him. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe Scotty prefers blondes. Like a duck to water. <laughs> what the fuck is this how is she a lieutenant <laughs> if she's a fucking green officer she should be like oh uh, you know ensign or I, some no, shit no I, I think she's a lieutenant but this is her first space assignment ah uh. This attitude there, by the way, is played by Jan Shutan, whose only other notable performance that I could find was she played Detective Liz Grove in the 
thankfully stillborn pilot episode for the proposed Dick Tracy series. What idiots designed this? I like thought this up. I don't know, but it it, you know just came and bit them in the ass. I mean, like, come on, we're gonna put all of our knowledge and culture and history in this one spot, and let's not protect it, because who would you know, who would destroy a planet that's purely academic? Well, I don't think it's like any other library. It's they, they had a collection of available information, but I don't think it's the only... I mean, if Memory Alpha gets destroyed, that doesn't mean that all information has been wiped clean from Federation access. Gipton. Gipton. Do they have to actually be at Memory Alpha to take advantage of its facilities? Can't they contact it through subspace radio, make a request? Or why not just leave the leave the information where it is, or just disperse it throughout the Federation? Like, how much information do they really have, or they need, you know, data space wise? Scotty does seem to be a little distracted here. <laughs> Listen. Well, with a shirt, a skirt that short, I'd be a little distracted as well. Also, how how long has it been for Mr. Scotty here? Maybe it's been like last time he got accused of murder. He might have a an issue. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, yep. Okay. The girl with kaleidoscope eyes. I doubt that's what the song was about. Well, so do I. In fact, it might have been about drugs, but I'm not sure. See, look how big that fucking thing is. Well, it's on a planetoid. Oh, okay, I guess. Fair enough. You find transporting anywhere on there. See, look at this. See? Okay, well, it's, oh. this is bullshit. What fucking idiot thought this was a good idea? And Did Scott he... is saying, "I didn't kill him." Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a disembodied energy being who likes to be <laughs> Jack the fucking Ripper. God damn it. Fuck that episode. <laughs> Fuck that writer. Well, at least it wasn't Sherry Lewis's husband. <laughs> Leave me alone. Nothing happened. I don't remember it. I didn't feel anything. All right. Why, why do they sound like the grudge here? This is bullshit. I was thinking, you know, more like, I'm a lonely frog. I ain't got no home. Ba-dum. Ba-dum. How is this going to... Oh, Jesus. Well, she is the memory alpha expert.
N no, sir. But I do suggest we might step step back a few paces in case that's radioactive. Also, uh, that was really fucking creepy. Let's just be perfectly honest here. This this episode sucks. That was terrifying. I'm going to have nightmares of that now. Oh, you're a big boy. You'll get over it. Until the ship's computers turn on us. Parcel tongue. Oh no, it's my sister. I don't think so. Oh. Listen, it's time to go. What the fuck is this bullshit? Or open fire. See, this is why Event Horizon is one of the best horror films <laughs> ever made. Is because the instant the captain sees the video of what happened to the previous crew, he says we're getting off this fucking ship and we're going to nuke yeah. it. Yes. Run in credits. Run in, run in credits. Oh, I was about to say, and this was another uh, callback to motion picture. She becomes a uh, mangled mess. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of nightmare fuel. That was a rather disturbing scene. How did you react to that when you first saw that in the theaters, not knowing what was coming? I went, ouch. <laughs> uh, I mean, that can have been a very pleasant way to die. No, what was it they said? Uh, whatever came uh, back didn't oh. last long. Thankfully. Yes. It's like, ooh. Uh-oh, I'm detecting approaching lawn maintenance person. Got to get make sure that uh, gravel is uh, cut nice and clean. That's right. I wonder if the actress who played the Vulcan uh, in that transporter accident in the motion picture, if she ever got onto the uh, sci-fi convention circuit. Probably. <laughs> she's like five no, she, seconds. She, she, she's sitting at her uh, table in the convention room, and next to her is a great big blow-up photo of what she looked like on the transporter platform. And, of course, her immortal lines... Ah. Oh, ah. Actually, I, I, I'm now curious if that actually was her. Because the, the screams were horrific. Uh, was that actually a human scream? They, they used a, you know, like a stand-up twisted blob? I mean, a stand-in twisted blob? No, no, no. I mean, like in the, in the sound uh, department. Oh, okay. The final frontier. These are the voyages of me and Mr. Scotty, who's going to go where no man has gone before. 
<laughs> she does have a nice smile, admittedly. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully she doesn't get mangled in a transporter accident. Hmm. That's really odd. For those who are not paying, who who are not watching with subtitles on Netflix for whatever reason, they just decide to go back and forth between spelling out the number and then using the actual numerical number. Laziness. I, I, how is that lazy? Laziness would be using the actual numbers for all of it. And if they look forward, they, oh, there it is again. <laughs> I was thinking if they switched to forward view, they'd find they were heading right into it. Fire. So first Federation buoy. It's just a traveling Tranya salesman. Photon torpedoes. Hmm. All of them. <laughs> We've got you in our sights. Resistance is futile. I mean, wait a minute. Resistance is futile. Surrender your women. It's increasing speed, sir. It gives not one shit. Why did it go around? I don't know. Oof. And this is, is the episode the wiki pulls its... Uh, uh, name from holy shit. Anyway, you're about to say something. I was gonna say, do Kirk and Spock ever find themselves standing and blocking uh, Sulu and Chekhov's view of the view screen to such effect that they say, "Could you guys just move out of the way a bit?" If it had a reaction, the episode would be over right by now. 
Well, I mean, they could still have the mystery. You know, maybe they managed to get communications going. Targeting the discotheque, sir. It never occurs to him to use photon torpedoes. Oh, well, too bad. Sorry, Scotty. Open fire. <laughs> There's plenty of other brunettes in the sea. That's right. We'll find you another computer expert. Besides, he's married. I think it'd be interesting if Scotty uh, fell in love with a, uh, a Vulcan girl. I'd like to see the Vulcan woman that would... Uh... Develop feelings for Scotty. Well, she doesn't have to develop feelings all the time. Just, you know, once every seven years. Just to ah! go, <laughs> They're already hanging out in open space. How much deadlier does it have to be? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Dun, 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 dun. What the fuck are you doing? Get off my ship. Also, every time he says Lieutenant Romaine, I'm thinking, you know, she's a salad. It would have been better if, along with everyone else at the conference table, you know, we have Lamb Chop poking her head up above <laughs> the edge of the table. Lamb Chop in a Starfleet uniform? She, yeah. She's an officer. Oh, wait, no, Lamb Chop is a ship counselor. That's it. Exhaustive files. Well, I mean, her Esper reading, of course. Of course. Working. Oh, wait. What? It's 10 minutes. What, what background history? <laughs> well, she's kind of leafy and green, but... Wait, why is Scotty here? This is really inappropriate. Maybe they maybe Kirk felt that uh that uh Romero would be more cooperative if he was there.
Those what knobs on the right, on the left side of the of that console. Yeah. They look like the tops of uh, marker pens. Also, what is he reading? That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, he's the, 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 rattling the up rows all this of information. Lights. What? 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 You should have had a dramatic music cue with that. Really? Where's the dinner? Oh, now we get the musical cue. And for some reason, the computer was repeating itself. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> I'm getting to see why Lamb Chop only had a couple of writing credits here. Oh, dear. Also, what an easy acting gig, you know. Just be told something and stare concernedly in the distance. <laughs> Scotty, your blue balls almost killed this ship here, okay? Really? Destruction of the ship. I don't know. <laughs> Gripping drama here. <laughs> He's got 15 minutes to figure out how to save his life. Says the man who's been accused of murder. One. <laughs> so as we know a lawyer we can get you. Also, you may not realize this. I'm a main character on the cast. I won't die. You, on the other hand. <laughs> Well, open fire. Yeah. We try and outrun it.
Yes, Captain. Anti what? Shouldn't anti grav testing? Shouldn't the doctor be giving out these instructions? Well, you know, McCoy is just a uh, second doctor on the ship. Oh. Wait, what the fuck was he? Hold on, what did that guy I, do? <laughs> I was wondering. I mean, there wasn't anything for him to turn. What was he adjusting? <laughs> Holy shit! There he is again. <laughs> and, uh... Oh my god! It's like this. Uh, sit... uh, there's a Russian propaganda video. Uh, I forget, like early two thousands, mid two thousands, whatever. And uh, they're talking about their their top notch military mechanics, and they ha they're they're interviewing this this young uh, recruit who's you know working on this uh, helicopter engine thing, and they they zoom they they show him working, but his wrench does not fit the screw. Like, hmm. There's there's no resistance there. He's just like doing the motions. Oh shit! Here we go again. They called in a special effects department from the BBC. Oh, you're paying them a compliment or something? It's weird. It doesn't it doesn't look like your average Star Trek. Yeah, it looks like something from a bad uh, uh BBC series from the 70s. You know, stuff that wouldn't get made uh for any amount of money um but because it's the BBC licensing fee they can just, you know, create artsy shit for Channel 3. Hmm. And there's that console with the bright lights again. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that the computer console from the, uh, that one, I think it was the Omega Factor? Or is that computer upgrade or something like that? I don't know, but I do know that chamber that she's, uh, collapsed in front of. That's the decompression chamber from Space Sea. And they just had it in the, in storage or something? I guess. I wonder how heavy that is. I mean, they just have to haul it out and set it up for a particular episode. It's probably just, you know, plywood and plaster. And he just happened to know that. Well, of course he does. It's Spock. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. 
She will be just a puppet. Well, I mean, yeah, you, oh, Lord. That is really problematic. Holy shit. Yeah. We should kill them. Or at least they're calling it a pressure chamber instead of just calling it something else and hoping no one notices. <clears throat> uh, he hasn't been paying attention at all this episode. No, he hasn't. Well, I mean, to the wrong thing. Well, his attention is focused on other... Those legs, for one thing. Uh, yes. She's not bad in the other departments either. Nope. She did not fit uh, any of the issues that some of the 1960s women had. What the hell was that? The Zaitarians attacked him. Well, increase the gravity then. Yeah. Wait, what? They're going to build up the uh, atmospheric pressure inside the chamber. They're going to crush her like a tin can. Well, they have one way of squeezing the Zaytarians out. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think so either, but... No, what nobody called and contacted me when they were writing this episode. Well, I just heard by a hand know. puppet who thought she could write <laughs> uh, Star Star Trek. If she's in a weightless environment, then why is her hair hanging down? It should be drifting around her head. It's because she was uh, raising up. Also, also, uh, here here's a shock, Papa. I I don't think she's actually <laughs> weightless. I think she's just, you know, hanging uh, off the side of a wooden table thing. I, I, I am not, okay, I'm not that far off my rocker here. Uh, it's just an observation I have. But if you ever get a chance, watch NASA footage showing women on board the space station, especially those with longer hair. And the way it drifts around is rather distracting. Can't believe you believe that that NASA footage is fake. Well, I'm sorry, I'm susceptible. You you can see where the wires are and shit. It's all been done by Stanley Kubrick. You're just trying to control your mind. Wake up, sheeple. The earth is flat. The moon isn't real. And JFK Jr. is a CIA agent or some shit like that. I don't know. <laughs> Can she hear him clearly with all the atmospheric pressure? Yes. It's atmospheric pressure. It's not atmospheric vacuum. 
She could probably hear him better now than she could uh, otherwise. Well, screw Mr. Scott. Cough, cough, cough. And take a nap. That's I mean, something that, I've always wanted to try, is sleeping in weightlessness. Or you can just go to a sensory, sensory deprivation tank. It's pretty much the same thing. Well, with my luck, I'd roll over in the tank and get my mouth full of whatever liquid is holding me up. Saline. A little bit of salt water. It's, but it's difficult to just roll over, and once you learn to relax, you don't really have a need to. There's, like, no pressure on anything. What kind of bullshit is this? She gets taken over by aliens and she doesn't get a day off? <laughs> Man, fuck Starfleet. Holy shit. <laughs> I need a new assistant. Oh, oh Lord. She doesn't want to be a lieutenant anymore. She wants to be an ensign in engineering with me. And we. <laughs> That's a rather low-key conclusion to a Star Trek episode. That's kind of funny. Well, I don't mean just Kirk's uh, dialogue here. I mean the whole resolution of the situation. Stick the girl in the pressure chamber and just squeeze the... Uh... Oh, that? That was bullshit. I was yeah, like, I, really? This is going to work? I mean, I was going yawn. I, well, to be fair, I was going yawn through most of the episode. Just... <laughs> Uh, well, you were you were still kind of tired when you signed on, so. Oh, pretty much. You're you're more exhausted than I am. Oh lord. Uh, so yes, they were they were putting all of their knowledge and stuff on one computer on one planet, and decided not to protect it because I mean it's academic. Why would anyone want to attack it? Well, not so much attack, but I was thinking. Something, you know, similar to the Zaytarians, or some kind of enormous storm could come along and uh, take them out. Well, so, what, if, what if the Romulans found out about, like, the Romulans who have a history and a habit of cloaking battleships, moving them across the border, uncloaking, and then just completely wrecking, you know, Starfleet outposts that are designed to withstand attack? Uh and we didn't resolve that either, did we? Like, no, we didn't. Spock said, "Oh, this is you know the brain is damaged, the loss is irretrievable." Blah blah blah. So now they're going to have to start all over again from scratch. Oh wait, do you think this is a way they could retcon their every, like all the uh, endless eternal species that they stumbled across and got information from 
that would you know that are beyond their wildest uh, understandings. It would work. It you know be a nice uh, opportunity if someone picked up on it. But unfortunately, it doesn't no solve it. what happens later on either. <laughs> they keep no, doing that for the end episode. And oh. it would certainly take more than one person, i.e., Lieutenant Romain, to do all the repair work. Hopefully, they'd be sending a team to assist her. Oh no, she's a lieutenant. This is her first assignment, so clearly they're just going to throw this whole thing on. So this is her first assignment, and they're giving her memory alpha, which is apparently a critical piece of infrastructure. Like, the more I think about this, the more upset I get. Yeah. Uh, With all due respect to Sherry Lewis. Just stick the lamb chop. <laughs> it's like, make another hand puppet. You got two hands. Yeah, I'm giving this a... Uh... Uh, either a very low B or a very high C. Uh, I'll give it a C. Oh, well, not an F. Okay. No, I have to have at least some standards here. We we've seen some Fs. Uh, alternative alternate factor, you know. Yeah. What do we got? What's next episode? Requiem for Methuselah. Uh. Actually, a step upwards, in my opinion, at least. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy beam down to a supposedly uninhabited planet to gather the mineral retalon to fight a plague of regalian fever. Yeah. Huh. And they encounter an immortal human. An immortal human or mortal human? Immortal. Okay. Also, is that that probe from that one episode? Hold on. We can find that scene here. I see McCoy standing next to what looks like a uh, one of those uh, sentient probes that they keep running across here. Hold, wait. Okay, here we go. All right, what do we got? It's a rebuild of the uh, Nomad probe along with the that's uh, cloaking, it. Yeah. The cloaking device from the Enterprise incident. That's it. The Nomad probe. Well, we got to make use of what you have. Oh, well. And it would have been very difficult to uh, uh, remaster that probe, which is a pity. I wonder what happened to it. But anyway, I hope you all, all enjoyed this episode and join us again next time for hopefully a better one. Because <laughs> after after uh, the Methuselah, we're going to go to the, the way to oh, eat. Space it. hippies. Yes. With the top 40s for the monkeys. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Looking forward to your scintillating commentary on that episode. Oh, my God. I'll start start taking bets on how long it's going to take for Jeremiah to bow out and leave me to finish the commentary. <laughs> uh, anyway, take care, everybody. Hope you uh, see you again next time. Mm, behave.